How's it going? Tori here with Salt City Content. Today we're going to talk about the Dyson. I've had a couple times where you go to vacuum and the Dyson will start and stop, start and stop, and you can't even get a full vacuum in. Um, this vacuum I've had for about three years. At first I thought maybe we were having a battery issue, but the battery was full, didn't quite understand it, was about to jump on Dyson.com and order myself another battery. Luckily, what I did was I cleaned the filter on the top here and that helped out the issue. It automatically just started working again, even with the filter not looking very dirty or actually not even dirty at all, even though dust in, in that uh, filter um, somehow messes with this device and makes it so it won't work and it just start and stops. Very frustrating. Luckily, it only started doing this after three years. Um, ultimately, what I ended up doing was uh, cleaning the filter and that helped for maybe one or two more times. So ultimately, I did have to go on, um, go online uh, on Amazon and buy a replacement one of these filters. And that did the trick. I'll show you the filter right here. Um, this is washable, so you can wash it. And I'll do a demonstration here in a second um, of a breakdown and how you wash this thing. I do wash it quite a bit. Um, this is just one of those that after... I don't know, 15, 20 washes, you ultimately are just gonna need to replace it. But it's amazing how we're replacing this one little device and all of a sudden your vacuum will be back up and running and with no problems. So I would definitely recommend cleaning this, washing this, and if it is still not, if it's still start and stopping, then go ahead and find a replacement online and you'll be amazed. It will work, the machine will be back and running. It most likely is not a battery issue. Okay, so to take this apart, first thing you do is you pop this filter off right here. You can set that aside. This filter actually you can wash. I just stick it under the sink, rinse it really good, squeeze it out, and then I'll also just lay it out to dry for a couple hours. This does need to be dry before you put it back inside the uh, vacuum. But yes, wash this as much as you possibly can. This is usually the culprit to a lot of your problems with these Dysons. If this, even if it doesn't look dirty and it's got a bunch of dirt in here, it will actually cause the Dyson to start, stop, start, stop. And you'll think maybe you have a battery issue. Um, and even after maybe about a year or two, you will need to go and buy a new one, even if you're washing these consistently. This is actually the second one that we bought. Um, and you can tell right here, the original Dyson one came with, there was like a little knob right here. Um, this is an aftermarket one that we just found on Amazon. But you will most likely have to buy replacements of these after about a year or two. I use this vacuum a lot, so two years is is pretty good considering how much we use this vacuum throughout the entire house. Anyways, so you set that aside. Then the next part is you just pull this. It's going to drop out the bottom right here. And then you'll see these little buttons right here. Push that and that slides out. Real simple and easy. Set that aside. That piece, I've already cleaned this right now. But that piece is typically pretty dirty along with this one right here. So obviously when you first open this up, you want to be over a trash can. So any um, dust or dirt or anything that's remaining in there falls in the trash can and not over anything else you don't want it to. Um, and then last part is you push this little button here and then it'll just pop right out. And so then I'll usually take this and set it aside and this part I will rinse all in here, get it all clean. One thing you don't wanna get wet, you do not wanna get these connectors wet. And I usually try to avoid getting anything right here um, wet as well, cause that's where power is sent to any of the attachments. So I usually don't pour water down this, but I will get water in here, fill it up a little bit, dump the water out in the sink and then wipe everything, um, wipe the entire piece 
clean and then I let it dry. Usually when I'm letting it dry, it takes about an hour or two. I leave everything open and just leave it out as so. Um, this is another item that I will usually rinse all around this area, right through here. Um, you, I don't pour water down in this area or down the top. Um, I don't think there is any electrical items in this. Um, I just don't, just to be safe, you can kind of see that it's, it's still a little dirty for me. Usually what I'll do is I'll take and I'll tap this. And again, like I've, I've done some cleaning, you can see a little bit came out there. But, um, and then I'll just take a wet rag or wet towel, wipe in here, wipe all around and get this pretty clean and set that aside. The last thing is you can pop this off and also again, either use like an air compressor or something, blow this out or tap it. This one I haven't really had too many problems with. Um, you can see I haven't even really cleaned this and it's not dirty at all. Haven't had too many problems with it. So then I just snap it back on. When everything's ready to go, to put this thing back together, you first take this item and you'll see these um, connectors right here. They're gonna need to connect right here. So I usually just line them up just like that. And then you just push up, pretty simple. Then the last piece, you're gonna take this rail right here and it's gonna go down back behind this gray piece right here. You'll see these tracks right here and right here. That's where this rail will sit and it just slides right on. And when you push down it, obviously it will pop out the bottom. And then with that, reinsert this. You're ready to go. And that's basically it.